Hey guys and welcome to a brand new video here on FBL Now. Today we're going to be going over some knee-jerk reactions for Game Week 3. So if you're excited for the video, drop a like down below. Leave a comment how are you currently getting on in Game Week 2. Subscribe if you're brand new and let's get into the video. So, starting things off, before we get into the knee-jerk reactions for Game Week 3, just going to go over how I'm currently doing in Game Week 2. Only on 38 points, a bit of a red arrow, not gone too well for me at all. Um, I did decide to play Turner in goal. Of course, in the end, it didn't really matter, but when Turner did concede against Sheffield United, it was a little bit annoying, but uh, Anana got two points as well. Um, I just I wasn't 100% sold on like Anana against uh, Spurs away, and yeah, rightly so. They, they absolutely battered them. So, well, I say battered them, but yeah, it did. I mean, they should have had a penalty, like as a Bruno owner, that was also really annoying, but you know, they should have also had a penalty against them in the Wolves game. So I guess things also kind of like come around in full circle. But yeah, I went Turner, who obviously only got two. Est Opinion getting me another 11 points. Insane. He's been getting big points, and that's without the clean sheets as well. Like, it's actually a bit mad. If he got was if he was getting clean sheets as well, it would be so insane. Uh, Saliba's obviously yet to play. Chilwell, uh, really unfortunate. Um, obviously, came off on like the 60th minute as well. Uh, unlucky not to score, really. He had some more shots in the box. He was getting really forward. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, coming off on the 60th minute, it wasn't ideal, but at least he didn't get zero points. At least he did pick up a point. Um, so yeah, not the greatest from the back line there at all. And the midfield, nothing really to shout about either. Rashford only getting two points. Bruno getting one point, picking up that yellow card. Again, should have had a penalty. Uh, Matoma, an absolute hero with 12 points. But of course, Mbwemo outscoring him as well. So every time Matoma does well, Mbwemo goes and does better. So even though Matoma has been doing really well for me, and Buemo has been outscoring him, so he wasn't actually the correct choice. Obviously, if you went without Matoma and Mbwemo, then I feel for you. If you went for like Eze or, or Diaby instead, then I definitely feel for you because, yeah, not having Matoma and Mbwemo has definitely got to be hurting ranks. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've not got Mbwemo and he's hurting my rank. I'll probably keep Matoma until game week four and then obviously get rid of him for Mbwemo because that's when Brighton's fixtures get a little bit worse and I don't really need him for that. Again, I took a I took the gamble on Matoma over Mbwemo, but the penalties have just really helped out. He scored three, but two of them have been penalties and... You know, it is just one of those things. Penalties are so, so, so important in FPL. And that's a, a, a clear reason why. Uh, but yeah, not great from the midfielders. And then also up top, Watkins off penalties now. I uh, think I will be getting rid of him now because that just really lowers his FPL value, uh, losing penalties. He did win the penalty, so luckily he got the assist. But yeah, really annoying that uh, he, he is off penalties now. And then Haaland definitely should have scored, um, but picked up nothing. So a blank there. Salah owners loving that. Uh, so yeah, 38 points at the moment. Three players left to play. I'm hoping for an Erdegaard masterclass tonight. I, I, I'm really worried about Martinelli, but if Erdegaard could get a goal or something tonight, then I'd be really, really nice. I'm hoping to finish on like 50 points with three players left. So I need 12, so I need an average of four points from each of them. So obviously if one of them scores, um, then that'd obviously be really, really ideal. But uh, yeah, three left to play, 38 points. I've obviously got two uh, free transfers in the bank. I'll be going over a team selection video tomorrow because um, I've got a lot, like I've got so much kind of ideas to go over and stuff with certain things happening in my team. But yeah, as of right now, 38 points. I'm hoping for a, a 50 point finish, but we'll see what happens. Let's move on to the knee jerk reactions for game week three though. And number one is Mbwemo. Over 350,000 people have brought in the Brentford striker and, you know, completely understand why. He's got such good fixtures coming up now. Uh, he's arguably had like two di his two difficult fixtures so far. Like obviously Tottenham, you know, difficult fixture, especially away. And then Fulham, I mean, they absolutely battered Fulham. I feel like Fulham's a bit of a, a, a team to target now, uh, especially with like Mitrovic going as well. But uh, yeah, he's got Crystal Ballas, then Bournemouth. I mean, the Newcastle game's annoying, but you know, Newcastle haven't been keeping clean sheets lately. And then Everton, Forest, United don't look strong at all. And then Burnley, Chelsea don't look strong. West Ham, like he's got really good fixtures coming up. So yeah, I think I'll keep Matoma because I think they've got West Ham at home this week and Brighton are just so good going forward. But after that, I can think I'm definitely going to be you know, bringing in Mbwemo for, for Matoma for that Bournemouth at home fixture. But yeah, Mbwemo being brought in by a lot of people. Est Opinion also being brought in by a lot of players. I don't think he's the player to bring in now. I feel like if you didn't start with him, then the ship has definitely sailed because once you have the West Ham game, they don't have great fixtures really coming up. I mean, they've got Newcastle at home, United away, fair play, Bournemouth would be a good fixture, Villa away, that's going to be tough. And then they've got Liverpool and City. Um, obviously, after that, it's great because they've got Fulham, Everton, Sheffield, Forest. But with the fixtures they've got to get through to get to those good fixtures, I don't think it's really worth bringing them in for 5.2. Um, yeah, obviously, if you've got him still, you keep him. I'm, I'm not going to be selling him. I've, I've had him since the start of the season. Obviously, I'll play him for the West Ham game. I'll play him for the Bournemouth game. I'll probably play him for the Villa game. Probably even play him for the United game, really. I could see Brentford, I could see Brighton beating United. Um, but apart from that, 
you know, Newcastle at home might be good. So to be fair, I might just play them every week anyway, but there are definitely better options out, with, out there with the fixtures. Uh, Wissel also being brought in by a lot of players. Um, yeah, he's only 6.1 mil, so obviously a really good striker option. Uh, not as good as Mbwemo, but obviously Mbwemo is a midfielder in this game and Wissel is a striker, so uh, that's why people are probably more opting for Mbwemo. Obviously Mbwemo is 0.5 more, but with penalties, gets you an extra point for... Um, goals and stuff like that so it definitely is i think worth bringing him away but if you have no midfielder spots then yeah Wister is definitely someone you could target but he's obviously had a really good start to the season as well uh matoma again just like estepinion i don't think it's really worth it west ham game's fine like i say i'll be keeping him for the west ham at home game uh, but after that you know i'll be selling him because i don't want him for newcastle united uh, liverpool and city at all um so yeah same with march i mean march again he's, he's you know got nine points then 15 uh fair play like if you had him then you know you've done a really good uh you made a really good decision but i, I think the ship has sailed you know 6.6 .6 mil takes a midfielder spot but for these fixtures it's, it's really not worth it in my opinion so yeah even though like all of the players like all of the top transferred players are in of like brighton and brentford players uh which is weird but like I say, it's probably not worth it. I understand the Brentford players completely, like, definitely get those. And even, like, Henry's a really good option for Brentford as well. Uh, he's getting really attacking this season. Uh, but, yeah, Brighton, I think, is a, is a hard pass if you don't already have them. Uh, let's go on the most transferred out players. James, obviously, picking up that injury. Um, I don't know what it really means for, like, Gusto and stuff, because Gusto obviously did start. Um, but, you know, he's got a hamstring injury. He's expected back on the 17th of September, so that's a few weeks, um, really, of Gusto. I don't really think it is worth it. If you did start the season with James, you've just been very, very unlucky um, with that injury and stuff, because, you know, th these fixtures coming up are, are, are really a dream, like Luton, Forest, Bournemouth. Villa at home is the toughest fixture um, from game week three to eight. And, you know, I know they got battered by West Ham, uh, but... You know, I, I still think that uh, this is this is a team you want to be targeting with all these good fixtures coming up. But yeah, James has been transferred out. Stones isn't back until after the international break. Um, so yeah, he's a player. If you do have him, he's probably just to get rid of now. Probably, if you don't have like Chilwell and stuff, then obviously bring him in for Chilwell. But again, just really unlucky if you have him because of that injury. Um, he's also actually gone down in price. McAllister with that red card. Again, there's better, obviously, Liverpool options anyway. So I wouldn't really go around trying to find McAllister into your team. He takes up a midfielder spot and yeah, he's not going to be the best FPL asset. I don't know if he's not going to be on penalties either. I know that Salah just missed one. Potentially he could be on penalties now, but either way, Liverpool have some really good fixtures coming up, but there's much better Liverpool options than McAllister 100%. Uh, and then Rashford as well. I don't understand selling Rashford before Forrest at home. I do not get this one. Fair enough, Arsenal away and then Brighton at home. Completely understand that, but uh, like Forrest at home is a really good fixture for United. I know they had Wolves at home and just barely scraped by that but uh yeah I, I could arguably I, I might be getting rid of both my my uh, united players but not until after forest away like I, I i just can't see the point in doing that um but i mean fair play if he gets nothing at forest then you know you've done well but that's such a good fixture to target uh, especially with bruno as well so i wouldn't really want to do that and then darwin nunez as well i think he's had two uh two two games where he's just not started uh it doesn't look like he even though he had a really good preseason and they've got really good fixtures coming up. Uh, yeah, it's just it just doesn't really seem like he's hit the ground running at all, which is very unfortunate. But, you know, that's just the way it is. You know, you can have a really good preseason and just still not get into the team. So, yeah, I don't think Nunes is an option at all right now. Uh, there's definitely like Gakpo or someone that you'd rather get who is starting and stuff. But either way, they're the most transferred in and out plays so far for game week three. Of course, we still have the game tonight. Arsenal do play uh, Palace away. Um, so that might also shape a, thing, a few things up. But uh, we'll, we'll obviously do the team selection video tomorrow. So, yeah, until then, guys thank you for watching let me know how you are currently getting on in game week two subscribe if you're brand new though ring the notification bell and until next time peace